Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us and being here with us again for another wonderful episode of Secret Jews. Today we're going to talk, share with you uncovering hidden Jewish history. On this episode, evangelical Christians with Jewish roots. Let's go ahead and give our sponsors their due. First of all, the wonderful documentary, The Secret Jews of Calabria. We're actually going to give you a little peek inside this documentary today um, with a few clips for you. This documentary uncovered Jewish traditions hidden for over 500 years. If you want to find out how to get your copy of this documentary on DVD or even how to have an event and host a viewing for your group or your organization, please visit rabbibarbara.com and you'll be able to see more information on that. Call Precali, producer of The Secret Jews of Claria and Ibex Motion, where documentary film is used as a key to our past and our future. You can always email Carl at cprecal, P-E-R-K-A-L, at netvision.net.il. And Rabbi Barbara Iello, Italy's first woman rabbi. Find out about all of Rabbi's wonderful services that she offers um, at rabbibarbara.com. And the William David Company, we are the proud producers of Secret Jews. To find out more about all of your business marketing solutions, visit WilliamDavidCompany.com. Well, let's go ahead and bring on your co-host for today's episode, Rabbi Barbara Aiello. Welcome, Rabbi. Thank you very much, and welcome to all of our viewers. And uh, it's so good to be back with Dr. Randy and producer Carl. Hello. Hi everybody, and, and Rabbi, give us a clue. Where where are you speaking to us from? Very relevant. I am I am speaking from my rabbi's study, which is above the synagogue near to me to Del Sud, in the mountains of Calabria, the instep of the Italian boot, a little village called Serra Stretta. So you have to bear with us if you ever see Rabbi disappear, or sometimes you lose a little bit of the sinking in the video because she's literally on top of a mountain. Um, in these small villages in Italy and I could tell you having have been there the internet is basically like fishing wire so uh, if, we, if we lose dial, a dial, 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 dial up, dial up connection <laughs> my, my 14 year old was to her was like being in hell with no internet everywhere we went <laughs> through Italy so um, so just bear with us if from time to time we're doing we seem to be doing okay but just be aware of that and Carl you are joining us from I'm in Israel, and if I showed you out my window, I would uh, be pointing in the direction of the ancient Roman town of Caesarea, uh, which is really one of the, for anybody who's been in Israel or hasn't, as a matter of fact, really one of the great archaeological sites uh, from the Roman times uh, in Israel. All right. Well, Rabbi, are you going to start us off today? I think I'm very, very interested to hear this episode myself. Yes, I am uh, very enthusiastic about uh, the evangelical Christians who uh, live and work and worship all through these mountains, mountain towns, and all and, and, and up and down the coast of Calabria, because many of them, and I would venture to say it could even be the majority of them, have found an attraction to evangelical Christianity because they have Jewish roots. Now that may seem unusual to you, but let me explain. When established Judaism was eradicated, was wiped out from Calabria during the time of the Inquisition, uh, synagogues were taken over and uh, by, by the, the Inquisition authorities and they were turned into churches. Schools were disbanded and people uh, took their traditions not only into their homes, but into the basements of their homes and often observed in, in secret. As the centuries wore on, we're talking about 500 years ago, and as the centuries wore on, it, for people to maintain some connection with Judaism via a book, via what kind of a book could they have? Really, only the Christian Bible, the Old Testament, was what, of course, um, um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the five books of Moses, which, combine, com which comprise the Jewish Torah. If you wanted some connection with the written Jewish word, you turned to the Old Testament of the Christian Bible. And my husband had this experience as a boy. His grandmother taught him his Jewish history 
by reading the Bible stories from a Christian Bible that they had in their home. So when the evangelical movement took hold here in, re in recent years, I would say back uh, not more than a hundred years ago, the pe those with Jewish roots who may have heard some of these stories found an affinity in the, in the evangelical church because not only did they hear the stories, but the ancient Jewish holidays, the ancient that are described biblically in, uh, in, in, the, in the five books of Moses, were observed and continue to be observed by the evangelical Christians today here in Italy. I was amazed uh, because when we made the film, I more or less knew the narrative, Rabbi, of, of the traditional Catholic uh, Italians living in Calabria and who were kind of preserving Jewish traditions and so forth. So I saw that as, uh, and people who were coming out of very, usually very Catholic normative homes. But I was really, I did not realize that there was a strong evangelical movement. And I know that the evangelical Christians are um, are so connected to the Bible and through the Bible to their faith and through their faith to modern Israel. So we see in Israel all the time large groups, tourist groups of evangelicals, often from the United States but from other countries around the world coming to visit Israel. And I thought, okay, this is part of the story uh, with, with, with these people uh, who, who have such strong faith and are so loving of modern Israel, we have to get them to Israel. And we uh, brought a small group of them, uh, I think from one congregation. Uh, they were choir members, they sang beautifully, and they came and stayed. I gave them an apartment to stay in, in Jerusalem. And we managed to get a film crew together, and we filmed them as they were visiting Jerusalem. And I think we should take a look uh, at uh, a clip of them at the Western Wall, the Kotel, which apparently for them was just as meaningful as it might be for a Jewish visitor coming from New York or, or Los Angeles. They were really very touching. And later on we can take another clip, maybe you'll tell us more about them, Rabbi, uh, of, uh, with sharing some of their singing in Hebrew with us. veramente sentito che c'era un legame profondo con questa con questa terra. Uh, I have uh, had a wonderful experience over the years with this choir and uh, and, and the, my first experience was the first Passover Seder, the first public Seder that we did in 2004 here in Serastretta and several members of the choir came to join us for the for the Passover the Passover meal and they sang afterwards and it was they sang beautifully in Hebrew and they sang uh, they sang a number of, um, of, 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 of of songs that appealed to all of us they sang Shalom Aleichem, they sang Lecha Dodi and to hear these wonderful voices coming from these devout Christians and the tie that we had, the tie that we had between our, our, our two observances came directly from the parts of the Bible that we share. And it was lovely. And I've had an opportunity to hear them sing on other occasions. And, uh, they, and, and Carl, you're absolutely right. They have an affinity for Israel that is, uh, that, that is shared by, by, um, by, by Jews as well, by dedicated Jews all over the world. And their emotional tie to uh, to our heritage is is absolutely remarkable. Also, I want to mention that there is a uh, a, a, a sect here, a Christian sect in, in in Italy called the Valdesian Baptists. Doesn't have anything to do with uh, Baptists as we know them in the in the U, in the United States, but uh, the Valdesian Baptists were came from Germany, and they were persecuted and uh, and burned publicly at the time of the Inquisition as the Jews were. And so there is a great affinity among the, among the Jews of Italy for the Valdesian Baptists as well. And many times when I co-officiate a wedding 
with a Jewish and a Christian um, bride and groom. Uh, I often co-officiate with a Valdesian, um, uh, a Valdesian pastor, and we share many traditions, among them the tradition of the Hopa. I'm thinking, speaking of languages that they, they sing in Hebrew, Rabbi, maybe, maybe they would like to sing in Ladino, in Jewish Spanish, to find one or two to add to their uh, repertoire, or maybe they do. Well, I, I have taught them Bendigamos, the, um, the Ladino Hallel, and uh, um, it was just sitting around a table and there's Mirota songs after Shabbat dinner. We had some of the choir members uh, join us for uh, for dinner on Shabbat, but that would be a really good idea to have to, to formally teach it and add it to their repertoire. Absolutely. Did we see a clip? I think we're going to see also now a clip of uh, them singing, of the group singing, or maybe their lead singer. Why don't we take a look at that as well? E dove la corale canta? E questa corale è a canta in ebraico. I should mention, Rabbi, that uh, for all of our viewers, if they go into your website uh, or if they go into secretjews.com or rabbibarber.com, uh, there's going to be a link where uh, people can order uh, and get the DVD of The Secret Jews of Calabria sent to them right by mail. And I think uh, it's going to be really a very enriching 50 minutes for people to, to hear all these stories and pull together in a, in a really well-made film. Uh, I had an experience with one of the choir members not long ago who um, mentioned her, um, her, her happiness at, at finding the Evangelical Christian Church here in Calabria, of which there are many branches. And she said, and she said wistfully, if, if there had been any Judaism here, I know that's where I would have gone. And that, to me, uh, says speaks volumes, because it, it reminds me how open and welcoming it, we Jews must be to those who want to come home. Right now, um, around the world, there is a, um, there tends to be some suspicion on the part of established Judaism about Bani Anusim, about those who have uh, hidden Jewish roots, and um, how um, uh, how how dedicated are they to discovering their roots? How Jewish do they want to be? Are they really Jewish? I had a very unfortunate uh, um, exchange with a rabbi one time who said to me, the only real Anusim Jews are the dead ones. And I, 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 I thought, you know, sometimes my Italian isn't so good, so I had to ask him to repeat. And he, yes, what he said, he said, well, let me explain to you what I mean. Those who refuse to conversion, those are the real Jews. Those are the ones who remain Jewish. Those families who accepted forced Christian baptism, well, they became Catholic and they, they were no longer Jewish. This is the kind of thing that, that, that strikes me as in terms of my own work that we have to dispel. We have to we, we, we have to work against and and extend the hand of Jewish welcome to those who want to who would be Jewish only if they could. And um, and if the the evangelical church has has, uh, has been a home, a home base for the people that we that we see in the film, the choir members, the choir directors, because they feel they can connect to Judaism. And uh, and are accepted and wel and and welcomed. This is a very very important lesson for all of us Jews. It's and I, I want to say you know Rabbi, it's as um, Jewish as Jewish can be. Uh, if we look back to the story of Ruth in the Bible, uh, all she had to do in order to tie her fate to the fate of the Jewish people was to say, "Your people are my people," 
and your God is my God. And with that, she, in effect, not only could she come back uh, with her mother-in-law to live uh, with the family in Bethlehem, but she becomes the grandmother or great-grandmother of King David. Uh, so, so what is the lesson? The lesson is that uh, the, the real test of whether you're Jewish or not is your, your simple determination to become part of the people. It's not a DNA test at all. It's really about as spiritual a test uh, as, as there could be. And if you pass that test, you're in. That's right. That's right. And uh, the wonderful, wonderful book written not long ago by um, um, a Rabbi uh, Olatsky, who, um, who the title of the book says it all, Opening the Gates, and that uh, there are many, many people, he says, that uh, uh, would be Jewish if only we extended the hand of, of welcome to them. I feel that the evangelical church here in Calabria has done what we Jews should have been doing years ago. I'm so glad I'm here, and uh, I'm so glad that I can offer Judaism to these same people. However, I would never ask them to leave their church. I would just be open and welcoming to them if they chose to explore. And uh, But for those who have not found a, uh, a religious home, um, I, it's so in, it is incumbent upon me to make sure that the Judaism we offer here is accessible to everyone. And, and Rabbi, do you um, do do you find that some of these groups actually seek out your knowledge and your expertise to be exposed to, you know, the information that you have? Absolutely, absolutely. I have. Um, I am asked to speak uh, um, uh, at uh, evangelical events more often than I am at any other event, including Jewish events because being not only the only woman rabbi in Italy, but the only non-Orthodox rabbi in Italy, I um, have uh, uh, no relationship with my rabbinic colleagues and for, for obvious reasons. But with the Christian community, the evangelical community, and the Catholic community, there are people that are hungry to understand their, um, the, the roots of their religion. Uh, Pope John Paul II opened the door when he said that the Jews are the older brothers and sisters, i fratelli maggiori, of, uh, of, of the Christians, and that we need to, we, we speaking, uh, Pope John Paul II speaking said, we need to learn from the Jewish people. And so uh, that has uh, indeed opened the door for me all over Italy. Um, and, and I accept any, uh, any, any and all of the requests that I get as much as I can possibly do because I know there are people out there hungry to, um, uh, to reconnect with their Jewish traditions. And they could not approach um, one of the other uh, more religious or more orthodox rabbis to come and share some of this historical information. That would not be um, either. That wouldn't be an approach they would make, or that it wouldn't be well received and, and a rabbi attend. Uh, generally speaking, uh, the the rabbis in Italy tend to be uh, tend to serve only the uh, the Jewish community. Not all of them, of course, and some uh, more than others. Uh, some are more accessible to the Christian community than others. I feel that my accessibility has kind of pushed the envelope a bit, so that my rabbinic colleagues in the Orthodox community feel that they need to do a little more than they have been doing. And for that, you know, for that, I'm grateful. If I've been able to facilitate even a little bit of that change, I think that's a good thing. Um, but um, uh, the the understanding of the the Christian community that may have once been Jewish comes primarily from me. Uh, the the explanation of Judaism from a Talmud, Talmudic point of view, a legalistic point of view, uh, often comes from my Orthodox colleagues. So they're actually coming and they're accepting of the fact that their background has some Jewish historical, uh, you know, basis to it, and they're looking for the validation of that to include in their current religious beliefs. You know, they're they're looking they're looking to understand their history so they can feel they can un understand their fa their past so they can. Uh, forge a, a, understand their past so they can forge a more spiritual, spiritually guided future. And uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to become Jewish, 
uh, but it means that, that, that for many people who have Jewish roots, they want to understand why their family was so different. They want to understand um, who they are, what they were. Um, uh, many, many people um, uh, that I meet, especially younger people of means, not the elderly here who would have a tough time traveling, but the younger educated people of means who go to Israel just feel an immediate connection to Israel. And just like the, um, I think you found that, Carl, with, uh, with the, the uh, choir members that came. They were, there was such an affinity. They, you, 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 it's almost indescribable. And, uh, um, and, and that, I think, is ex very, very healthy. It's very healthy. It's also good in sociologically for, it, for Europeans, especially Italians being among you know, those among the European community, to feel an affinity for Israel and to feel supportive toward Israel. This is very important. Fabulous. It's um, an opportunity to say that a lot of this comes out uh, in the film, The Secret Jews of Calabria, and people can get a peek into it and order the DVD on Rabbi Barber's website. And uh, this is it. We were we were so pleased to have them come to us. I, I, maybe maybe there's a, another group to bring over, Rabbi. We'll coordinate uh -oh. together. We'll, I don't know if, if people have the wherewithal with the economic situation, but it would be fabulous to, to bring a whole group over and, and arrange uh, some events for them and some meetings and so forth. I'd be happy well, to have Well, and you have to film it, right? Right, Carl? Oh. And, and, IBEX Sorry? Will, and IBEX will film it. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll find a way to to, to get well, it out to a wider audience. In terms of economics, we're only from Lamezia Terme Airport here. We're only one hour from Tel Aviv, and in the summer there are two flights uh, a week um, going um, going and returning. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes, the going to Israel among the Catholics. Of course, the Catholic. Um, Church is stronger in Calabria than it is anywhere else in Italy, and so making these these uh, pilgrimages and, miss, and missions to Italy is uh, a very um, a very important part of Catholic life here in the South. As a matter of fact, a priest in our, in our town took uh, a number of, of his parishioners uh, with uh, with him to Israel last last summer. Wanted me to go along, but I had. Uh, I had my, my my usual group of bar bat mitzvah students who came for their ceremonies and my interfaith wedding, so I couldn't go. Next time. <laughs> Next well, time. Let's do it. Let's do it. All Absolutely. right, everyone. Okay. Well, another wonderful episode, and we're going to uh, have Rabbi share any final thoughts that she has. Um, there are so, so many people who have strong ties to Judaism, whether it is strong family ties, strong ties in terms of, of, of interest, uh, feeling spiritually connected to, uh, to Israel, and, uh, and, and being open and welcoming to all of these people is very, very important to all of us modern Jews. And Carl, any last thoughts you want to share with us? Um, I think that, that, that we have to remember that it is not just a slogan to say that um, the Jewish people gave monotheism to the world uh, in, in, and the offspring were both Muslim and Christian religions that uh, grew out of Judaism. And there's a rocky road of history, but you can't get away from it, that, that, that we gave some, as Jews, we gave something. And um, we take something back from, from all of this. It's, it's, a, it's kind of a process. So I'm very enthused also with the evangelical story here. Uh, I'm very touched by it. All right. Well, thank you both for bringing us another wonderful episode of Secret Jews. Uh, today we were talking about evangelical Christians with Jewish roots. And join us again for another in our series of Secret Jews where we're uncovering hidden Jewish history. We'll see you on the next episode.